Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex, which is my favorite personal media serving application. I use it every single day here to watch all of the media that I have under my direct control. We've done a lot of content on this already, so I suggest you check out more of my coverage uh, if you want to learn more about how it works. And I run my Plex server on a WD MyCloud PR2100. It is a network attached storage device that has an Intel processor built in and it's able to do all of the advanced Plex features like transcoding and it can support multiple users here around my house both uh, when I'm home and also when I am operating remotely. And I really have found it to be a great way to serve all of my Plex media. But you do need, of course, to have a good backup in case something happens to it. Now, it's very easy to back up your media folders, but on the WD My Clouds, there's a few extra steps you have to take to back up your Plex data. And by data, I mean all of the metadata that you build as you start organizing out your media libraries. Things like playlists and how many times you've watched a video and all the other things that you might have done to organize your media folders. Uh, that's the stuff we're going to look at backing up on the WD My Cloud drives in this video. Uh, this idea came from a viewer who sent me an email a couple of days ago. I can't find the email that he sent me because I definitely want to give him credit for it. Uh, so if you did send me this email, let me know down in the comments below and I will pin your comment. I just couldn't find your email to put up on screen. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving this content before it is uploaded and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. I should also mention that WD is an occasional sponsor here on the channel, uh, but they are not sponsoring this video. And the PR2100 that we're looking at in this video came in free of charge from WD. So let's get to it now and see how all of this stuff works. Now I do suggest you check out the Plex support article on backing up your Plex media server data. It's actually not all that complicated on other platforms. You just have to locate your Plex media server folder and drag the files off someplace else for safekeeping. And then to restore that data, you just drag it back over again after you get your uh, device back up and running. There are ways in which you can use this to migrate from one platform to the other. We're not going to cover that in this video, but it might be something we do in the future. Now, if you wanna know where your Plex media server data is, uh, there's another support article for that. Both of these will be linked in the video description. And you can go through here and see uh, all these different platforms that Plex supports and where these media files are located. In many cases, it's just as simple as navigating the file system and moving the files over, and that's the case for most platforms. But WD is a little bit different because it actually stores the Plex data outside of where normal users can get access. So we actually have to go in a different way to get it. So let's jump over to the WD control panel now and set that up. All right, so we're now on the control panel for my WD MyCloud PR2100. I should note that this applies to all of the MyClouds with the exception of the MyCloud Home, which is a different product. So if you have a MyCloud Home, this is not applicable, but all the other MyClouds, this does apply to. And I know a lot of you are running your Plex servers on one of the many WD MyClouds that are not a home device. Uh, now, what we're gonna do here is go into the settings and we wanna go over to network because we have to turn on the SSH server uh, because this is the user that we need in order to get in. And I'm just going to flip it off and then flip it back on again so I can show you the process that you have to go through to get it set up. So we're gonna switch it to the on position here. You're going to get a warning about some of the damage you can do to the device if you do things inappropriately on it. We're going to click OK and we're going to promise to be very careful with that. And the other thing I suggest you do is go over to configure and set up a password that you're going to use to log in to this connection. Again, this is going to be different than the password and username you use to access the file shares because we're actually going to go in behind all of that stuff to get at our Plex data. So once you get that password set up, uh, we're going to move on now to the next step. Now the next step is going to be to shut down our Plex server while we're doing the backup because we don't want to have new data written into the Metafile database or something while we're in the middle of copying it off. Uh, so what we're going to do is shut it down so no user can get in there while we're doing this. And you do that shutdown through the Apps menu here on your control panel. So we're going to click on Apps and wait for it to load here. And when it's done loading, what you'll see here on the side under the Installed Apps section is our Plex Media Server. 
and right now you can see the run app is set to on and all we're going to do is turn it off and that will disable Plex and now that database will kind of be locked in and we can safely copy everything off without anyone else being able to write to it. So now that we got that done, let's go find an FTP client. Now the next thing we have to do is get an FTP client that can support SFTP connections. On Windows, I recommend WinSCP. It is free and it works quite well. Uh, the Mac has a few options available. CyberDuck might be a good one that you can grab on the Mac App Store. Uh, that will ensure you won't get any other things installed along with it. Uh, this one is also free, so you can use that. Uh, the one I use on the Mac, because I do a lot of FTP transactions, is Transmit 5. It is an excellent client, uh, but it does cost money. But if you are looking for a really robust FTP client, Transmit 5 is definitely a good one. And once you get that client installed, uh, we're now going to connect up to our WD My Cloud with that SSH password we set up a little while ago. So let's jump over to my Windows machine. I'm going to load up WinSCP and show you how to get that connection established. All right, so we're on the desktop now of my little Surface Go tablet, and we're going to load up WinSCP. And when you first load it up, it will ask you uh, where you want to connect to. And you can see right now by default, it's got SFTP enabled. I'm going to type in the IP address, my local IP address for my WD My Cloud device. You'll need to know that, of course, to both get into the control panel and do what we're about to do here. I'm going to leave the port number as the same, but for username, I'm going to type in SSHD as the user, and that's the default user for SSH connections. And then I'm going to type in the password that I established before uh, when we were setting up SSH in the network control panel. And now I'm going to click Login. And I'm just going to say yes here to accept the host key. And you can see now that we are connected. And you can see that we're in this root directory and we don't have access to the normal things we might typically see when we're connecting to our MyCloud because uh, we are now logged in, I think, as the root user, uh, which means we can cause a lot of damage in here, but it can also give us access to things that we don't normally have access to. And where they store the Plex data is in this MNT folder here. So we're going to click on that. We're going to click on HD. We're going to go to HDA2. It's kind of buried in here. And now you'll see that there's a shortcut here for Plex underscore CONF. And if we click on that, it will take us to the place where our metadata is stored. This folder is all of our Plex media server data. So if we dive into here, you can see we've got all the thumbnails that it's downloaded, the plugins, uh, the metadata, basically everything that we've done to customize our Plex experience is going to be inside of this folder. Uh, so really what you can do here is just take this and drag it over someplace. So I'm just going to go to the left-hand side of WinSCP where we can navigate my local file system. And I think what I might do is just move this over to the desktop. So we're going to grab that Plex Media Server folder and drag it over. And once this is done, we're pretty much done backing up all of our Plex metadata from the WD My Cloud. Unfortunately, you can't get access to this through the WD Backup app that's built into your uh, WD My Cloud device, nor can you get at it from your network file shares. You have to go in with one of these FTP clients using that SSH username and password that you set up in order to copy this data off. Uh, this directory might be pretty large as well because it's downloading a lot of data uh, so the more that you have in your Plex libraries, the more it will have downloaded for thumbnails and all the other supplementary information that goes with it. So be ready for this to take a little bit of time to fully download because there will be a lot of files that it needs to get at. Uh, but once it's done, you will have a backup of all of your Plex metadata from your WD My Cloud device. And once that folder finishes copying over, you are done backing up. You can turn on your Plex server again and get back to business. I found, though, that these uh, metadata folders can be quite large. So mine right now, for a fairly modest library, is over a gigabyte. So I expect if you've got a larger library, it's going to be a much larger file download. Now, one other thing you'll want to do is back up the media folders themselves. On the WD My Cloud, you can go over to the Backup option here. Uh, go over to Internal Backups to maybe just copy it over to an attached USB drive. Uh, so what I'm going to do is create a real quick job here called test. Uh, we're going to select my Blu-ray folder right here, click OK. 
And my recommendation for you is not to do copy uh, because what it does with copy is it creates a new backup every time it runs. And if you've got uh, a terabyte of Blu-ray movies like I do, that's going to take a while and quickly fill up your disk. Uh, so what you want to do is select either synchronize or just do an incremental, which will only copy over the new files every time it backs up. Uh, you can set a recurrence on here to have it fire off daily, weekly, or monthly. And once you create that, uh, your media directories will get backed up as well. But to get that data backed up, you do have to go in manually every time with your FTP client to back that data up. And hopefully this is something WD can make easier in the future because we all invest a lot of time in our Plex databases and we want to make sure those are safe and secure. Now this really applied only to WD drives in this video, but really this practice of backing up that metadata folder is something you should all be thinking about uh, because it is something that if you lost your computer or your server, uh, that data would be at risk and it doesn't just automatically back up someplace. So you really want to go in there every once in a while grab that whole directory, put it someplace safe that, so that you can easily restore it in the future should something go wrong. Now, according to the documentation here, the restoration is as simple as just copying the data back to its original location. On Windows and on the Mac, there's one extra step that you have to do to get registry data back into the Windows registry uh, or the P list that you might have to reinstall for OS X. But for what we're doing here, uh, all of the settings in addition to the data are stored in that directory. Now I want to jump back though because one of the things that Plex recommends you do uh, is put this data back first before you reinstall the Plex server application. So let me show you where that shortcut we were using before takes you. Uh, so you can see right here we had the shortcut that took us right into the directory where our data was stored. Uh, but where, where it really is if you kind of dig through it, uh, is in a folder here called NAS underscore PROG. When you jump in there, you will then see the Plex underscore CONF folder, and that's where the Plex media server is. So if you had to do a restoration, what you would do is create this folder and then drag that Plex media server folder from your backup over here. Uh, when it's done, you then go and reinstall the Plex application on your MyCloud. And if you have all your media in the right place, hopefully everything will come right back up the way it was when you left it. Uh, and hopefully that will help a lot of you if you do happen to lose data to be able to get back to where you started. Uh, so again, a little bit more work here on the WD side of things, but this process is pretty much the same across other platforms. And maybe we'll do some more videos on this if you're interested in diving deeper into that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. And I also want to thank Plex for their ongoing support of the channel. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mike Talbert, Brian Parker and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.